in church. So uh, I just want everybody to know I'm a I'm not a good Christian, but I'm a Christian, and I fail my father every day. Uh, I had a procedure done the other day. Uh, what's it called? A heart cath. Oh yeah, a heart cath. And a couple weeks before that. A couple weeks before that, I had a stress test, <clears throat> and they said it came back abnormal, and so they scheduled me for this heart cath, and... Uh, mind you, mind you, he has already went through this once. Right. I've already got one stint. So I was looking to get another stint. Well, <clears throat> uh, that didn't happen. Yep, praise God. Um, the doctor's words were, it's a freak accident. It's a freaky accident. It's a freak accident. Uh-huh. So what happened was my brother and sister-in-law had called me, and we all prayed about it the night before. And your sister, your sister, you talked to your sister too? I talked to my sister about it, yes, of course. And, um, well... That freak accident was no accident. I believe that was Father God. And would you tell him what the doctor told you? Because I wasn't really in it. <laughs> the doctor came in and he told me, um, the doctor came in and um, he was like, everything's fine. He, he gave me, he handed me this paper and all the arteries were, clear there's no obstruction whatsoever and I said well why why did it come back abnormal and he said well it something to do with his bowels it, it, it was the lower part of his stress test that came back abnormal and um, I said okay he said T to be honest with you I don't know he said it's a freak accident I mean, it's a freaky situation and that's all the explanation he could say and I thought to myself I know why it came back, right, you know? And uh, I'm telling you, man, I am so blessed to be in this family. Frank and I are very blessed to be in our family that we have because when we ask them to pray for us, they get down on their knees and they pray and it comes true. I mean, the blessings just pour on us. Anyway, I just want to pass that on to you all. Thank you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. There was somebody else in here that had a testimony, too. Who was it? Come and told me something about it. Huh? You? Come on. Hollered out something. Anybody else, though? There was somebody else that had, had a testimony, yeah, that we wanted to share. Huh? Nobody? Chickens. I've been fighting with uh, diabetes issues for a long time. My A1C started out as 11, and it's, it's slowly been going down, but when I went to the doctor last week, it is a 7.8. Woo! Hallelujah there. Thank you, Jesus. I got a testimony. Well, come on up. Get up here. Come on now. You know you like the mic. <laughs> yeah, my husband told me to come up here. Uh, this is not healing, but it's a financial praise report. Our transmission went out in our vehicle, and we took it to the dealership, and the guy was giving me fits about giving me a loaner. And I'm like, I have no way home. <laughs> so I contacted, I was able to contact his boss, and I got a loaner. So, <laughs> yeah. And they had the car for, what, two weeks? And called us to come and pick it up. It's got a brand-new transmission in it. We did not have to pay for, not even, nothing. And we got a brand-new battery. For, yes, in God good. We're tithers and we sow seed. Yes, they do. Yes, they do. Amen. Amen. 
Hallelujah. My wife wants to share something with you. So, Pastor, whoop, I keep thinking I'm falling right here. I don't, I got to stay away from that. There's a little dip. It makes me feel like I'm falling. Anyway, Pastor went to the doctor. You know, he's been having problems <laughs> with uh, sugar as well. The doctor says that his sugar is a little high. And it was 7.7. .7. And James is like, well, I really don't want to take medication. Well, doctor called him a month later, asked him, how's the medication doing? I'm not taking it. Why? Anyway, I talked to the doctor. We got him taking the medication. His sugar the other day was 6.6. .6. And the doctor told him if he continues to be a good boy, <laughs> that he'll take him off the insulin. So. Believe me. In Jesus' name, Amen. I don't care, baby. Whatever. Right here. Tell me that ain't fair. What about it? It makes me feel like I'm It's just a scene. Come on. It gets me every time. Man, hallelujah. Father God, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your word that we live by, that we apply to our lives, and we know and trust in it so that we see the victories that you promise us in your word. And, Father, we praise you for this in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I'll tell you what, guys. Last week, uh, last time we had church in here, it was horrible, wasn't it? Huh? It was horrible. Man, we was all hooted up and coated up and everything else, and we were down here praising the Lord. Yes, you know what? And, and, and man, that was so cool. Not that, it, not that it was really cool, really cold, but... What was so cool about it, because as, as so many people showed up for church, even in that horrible, horrible weather, that was what's awesome. And we didn't have the heat or nothing in here. Okay, so it was horribly cold in here. But yet we still came in, and we still praised, and praised the Lord. And we went out there where we had some heat and, 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 and gave a little bit of a message and stuff like that. So thank you guys, Th because you shocked me. You really did. You shocked me because so many people showed up to church that day and it was horrible cold outside and I didn't figure it. I, I said, I will be here. So if anybody shows up, I, I'm usually here. And uh, it was amazing because a lot of people showed up and I just wanted to thank everybody for showing up. And, and you know, to me, that's a relationship with God that I am going to endure whatever comes against me to be in my father's presence. That's what, that's what you guys showed me the other day. You were still here praising the Lord. You were still here receiving a message, even though it was horrible. You were still here. Thank you, Father God, for your children that you have called here to be part of what we're doing for you. And I just want to praise you for that in Jesus' name. Thank you guys so much. That was so cool. Hallelujah. Me and my wife, you know what, we make new uh, resolutions and things, you know, in the beginning of the year. And a lot of times they're personal. <clears throat> but, you know, if, if you're blessed the way we're blessed, I don't have too many personal things that, that I ask God for. You know, I wanted me and my wife to have a stronger relationship with each other. And before the year was up, we were already doing that. Every night, we have daily devotionals and other things, other books and stuff that we read out of. Uh, uh, the Survival Guide of uh, Rick Renner wrote. Uh, we're studying out of that and stuff like that, but we're reading together. We're reading to one another. Uh, I'll read, she reads, I read, she reads, and then uh, whatever else that comes up. Plus, we listen to uh, a teaching from uh, Rick Renner or... Uh, uh, Jonathan Kahn uh, quite often you know both of those are talking about the end times and stuff like this I've never felt a need to speak uh, preach about the Re book of revelations and people ask me about that and I said well God's never spoke to my heart about it well that's a change now that's that's different because uh, 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 I honestly believe that we are approaching the end of the end times okay so People need to be ready. You need to be ready for what's fixing to come. Okay? Uh, I know a lot of people talk about pre-trib, mid-trib, latter-trib. I don't care what trib it is. 
I'm going to be here until God takes me home. Okay, I don't care. You know what? I'm not in a big hurry to go. You know what? Because when we leave, the Holy Spirit leaves. And we need people to be born again. We need to be doing what God's calling us to do. And as long as there's too many people out there, outside these walls, that need to be told about Jesus Christ, then we need to stay here. I don't need to go to heaven. I know that I'm going to go to heaven. So when that time comes, whenever it's time for me to go there, I'll be there. But I am not in no hurry to get there because I believe God told me a thousand salvations this year. A thousand salvations and I'm going to have to do, God's going to have to open doors up big, big. Amen. But you know what he also told me? He says, you might not see a thousand people, but who you touch will involve a thousand people. And I said, whoa, thank you, Jesus. That relieved a little bit of pressure off me because I'm going to have to write down a thousand names so I can bring it to our church. You know what I'm saying? He said, hey, if you're out doing your work and you're sharing the gospel with people, guess what? They are going to, in return, share the gospel with somebody else, and they're going to share the gospel with somebody else. And before, it, before it's over with, you're going to, well, there's going to be a thousand people met, reached. Because of all the work you guys are doing, not me. You guys are doing. I'm going to be part of it. Me and my wife are definitely going to be part of it. But it's everybody that each and every one of us touch is going to bring those thousand people into the kingdom of God. Or more. Or more. But for some reason, the Lord spoke to me a thousand people. You know, I said this from the pulpit before. I said, you know talking to God, praying one time, and the Lord spoke to him, and he said, you see all them people behind you? Listen to what I'm saying. You see all these people lined up, all these people, there are hundreds of them behind me. And he said, all them people are going to go to hell because you never opened your mouth and told them about me. I never led none of them people to the Lord. And I was given opportunities to do so, but I didn't do it. That's what God was telling me. And then he said, okay, you see all them people behind you again? I said, yes, Father God. He said, all these people that I showed you a while ago are going to be in the kingdom of heaven because you shared something with them. You choose. Do you refuse to open your mouth and tell nobody about God? about Jesus Christ and about God or do you choose to be on fire and do what God's asking you to do not me you to do because what you do has an effect on people around you and has an effect on what God's going to do in these last days we are in the end times okay we have been in the end times for quite a while but now we're getting closer than we ever have and uh, scripture says and the in the books that we're reading things, says that we're going to see a lot of things turn around real quick and begin to happen. I was talking about uh, homosexuality, abortion, and things like this to people. People think it's okay. People think it's okay if they kill babies. People think it's okay if a woman wants to be with a woman and a man wants to be with a man. These are not scriptural. These go against God. Are we the children of God? Should we not do what God says? Should we not talk? You know, if God talks about the Ten Commandments. If God talks about everything that we should be living our life. It is not okay for them to continue doing that and saying it's okay. Because it's not okay. The end times are going to be horrible. And we're going to be part of it. I don't know how far we're going to be involved in it. But we'll be here as long as the Holy Spirit's here. When we leave, the Holy Spirit leaves. Amen? Huh? He stays? Yeah. But anyways, but you know what I'm saying is we're going to be here until God brings us home. Amen? We have a job to do, people. We have a massive job to do, and we need to tell people Jesus Christ loves them. Amen? We have to understand one thing. I hear people about... This is, not, this is a little bit off my message. But I hear a lot of people about 
man, I went and prayed for this person and that person got healed. I went and done this and that person got healed. I went and done this and I went and done that. And what, and what are you hearing and what are, you, what are they saying? I, 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 I did this and I did that. No, I'm sorry, but it's not you doing these things. It is God using you to do the work for him while we're here. You need to take your eyes off of me, myself, and I and apply them to where it belongs. It belongs to God himself. He is the creator, not you. He is the one that heals, not you. All we're doing is speaking what the word of God says that we need to be doing. And the anointing follows the word and releases it upon people's bodies and, and, and in every area, any area that they need. I pray a lot of times, Father God, don't let me get so conscious that it's me doing it. I am a vessel that you have allowed to do, to abuse. I'm allowing myself to be used to do your work while I'm here. This is what we need to focus on. Amen? Amen. You know, do people get healed? I can, talk, I can tell you hundreds of people that's been healed since we started the church. Uh, uh, Janor and a few other people way back under, what was his name, that we, uh, what was, I can't think of his name, big heavy set guy that was, Rick, Rick Newman, yeah, he uh, started up a book, and they have created how many people, when we were over on a shared in church, that we have been part of the healing uh, ministry and stuff like that. Lots of people got healed. You know, they had over 100 people got healed through our church over on Sheridan. That's been almost 20 years ago. So I wonder how many people have been healed today because of our faith in God, because we expect and know what God's doing and are capable of doing for us. Amen? Hallelujah. So anyways, let me focus back on this. I love you guys. I thank every one of you for being faithful. You know, this building is cold. It's very cold. Last weekend, it was horrible, horribly cold when we held church. I mean, man, you could be up here talking and steam just coming out of my mouth and whatever. You know what I'm saying? We had left and went in there and done the message and stuff like that. Today, we got a fan. We've been blessed a number of times with different things. You know, we got a family right here. Brad and Jennifer had fans like that. They said, Pastor, you had this put in here. It's going to push that heat in here, and it's not going to take from it. It's going to help add to it. So we put the fan in there. Now it's pushing the cold heat air in here, and we're still running 74 degrees in there. So it's not taken from that. It's just putting it somewhere else, keeping up with that also. So that's a blessing. Amen. Hallelujah. We got uh, a big unit we need to put up in this attic to get this thing heated and cooled in here. Okay. Uh, we got window air conditioning so we can run those. We've been running them for years. We need to get this thing heated so that we can come in here and be comfortable when we praise the Lord. You know what I'm saying? But hallelujah, that, that's going to happen this year. Me and my wife has written some things down. One of the big things that we want to see accomplished this year, and that's our little church building over there, finished. Quit talking about it. We need to finish it so that it quits drawing money from here to take care of that building. It needs to be supportive of itself, okay? So we're going to have that building over there up and running this year. We got to have central heat put in this area here. We'll have that done this year. You know, we have talked about our church being the givenest church. You know, for many years, our church has always been the givenest church that we've seen. I mean, today, I don't want to put nobody or nothing down, but today, our, our tithes and offering has dropped as low as it's ever been. When we run $300 a week in tithes, it's hard to pay the bills with $300 a week. You know, what's sad is I haven't personally been working myself. I haven't had no jobs to do myself because for years I would take what I make and I would sign my whole paycheck over to the church, give the whole paycheck to the church to make sure the church is functioning. I haven't even had jobs to do. Amen? So, Satan is attacking us. He is trying to discour discourage us. He's trying to take from us. But we are conquerors. We overcome. Amen. Amen. Uh, my little friend right here, she come, she's been with us for many years. And finally come back, huh? Amen. Do you know, over on Sheridan, 
almost 20 years ago was one of our church, one of our shirts. She still had it. Amen. Glory Refuge Church, Matthew 25, 35, uh, 36. Amen. Amen. And she brought this shirt today and said, you remember these shirts? And I said, yeah, I remember these shirts. Because uh, this is one of the shirts that we used to wear over there. You know, the flaming cross with a sword in it. Sword, two-edged sword. Yeah. You know, beautiful. Amen. Thank you, baby. Hallelujah. But uh, God has blessed us with a conquering church. We overcome challenges and things that has come against us. And let me tell you, we have been hit several times, but we've always overcome it. We have got hit and we got asked to leave a church that we were in. And we've been there for quite a while and we didn't have no place to go to. God opened the door and gave, you hear me, gave us this property. We didn't pay anything for it. He opened the door and gave it to us. So see, faithfulness pays when you have a part. Faithfulness pays. God rewards those who are faithful. Amen? Amen. All right, let's get back to my wife's point. And let's get to the message. She got a lot to talk about. <laughs> Amen. To become a person that God <coughs> will use to touch people in need. Living in the last day, last day, is a guarantee that you will meet people with serious needs. As we get closer to the end times, you will see a greater need that people will need to be met, uh, or needs that will need to be met. Amen? These end times you live in are going to become increasingly filled with hurt and pain, with people who are crying out for the answers you carry because they have the Holy Spirit residing within them. At any time... You can tap into his divine power to help family and members, friends, and individuals you encounter who are under assault. There are people all around you who need God's healing touch, and you can give it to them. Amen? We need to be his feet, his mouth. We need to be doing what God's asking us to do, calling us to do, because our society is reversing from God. They have for, for many years, they have taken, it's, it's really started turning around desperately when they took prayer out of schools. That's when the great turn began to happen. Right there, other gods that's been left because of how strong we were in our walk and our relationship with God have left and they are coming back today. That's the reason why we see our president of the United States uh, 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 celebrating gay rights and putting the red, you know, the, uh, on, on, on national TV. That's the reason why that the, our, 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 some of our big leaders and things are praying to Baal, praying to devil on national TV. They said that we are no longer, the uh, United States are uh, uh, under God, you know, and they are a big part of that. It's been going on for years. You know what I'm saying? So hallelujah. But they're mistaken. As long as we are here, God is here too. And we will always be a nation under God because of what we stand for. Amen? Hallelujah. If you'll act on the following seven steps and make them a consistent part of your life, they will help you become more spiritually sensitive to recognize those who God has put in your path to help. Practicing these steps as a way of life will help you get off yourself and become more focused on the needs of others. All of these steps are vital, uh, are a vital part of your becoming a vessel of deliverance, healing, and power whom God is well able to use to help, struggling, help the struggling people become stronger and get on their feet again. These points are simple. But if you will practice them, 
you will position yourself for God's power to flow through you to others. There are so many needy people in our time, and God wants your voice to become his voice to those who are crying out for answers. Your hands can become his hands to bring deliverance and healing to those who need divine, a divine touch. Your feet can become his feet to bring answers to those in darkness whom Satan has tried to keep blinded to the truth. You, for you to, a, to become a highly effective instrument in God's hands brings his love to hurting humanity. I suggest the following simple, life-transforming action steps. And we have seven, right, that we are going to be sharing and this is where I begin. Okay. So there's seven steps. Now, when we talk about studying this stuff and we talk about using books, we use the Bible too. I just, <laughs> I want y'all to know that. It's not about books. But we will never bring a message in here if we don't trust the person that we heard it from. Okay? And I don't know if anybody is familiar with Rick Renner. But this is where we are getting a lot of our information. Rick Renner, is, he is an apostle. He is a, a wonderful man of God. That man it has more wisdom. I just, I, I love listening to him. Anyway, the seven steps to be God's vessel in the last days. People are looking for help. You all know that? They're looking for help. And who's the answer to help? We are. If we don't tell them about Jesus, how are they going to know? They're not. We have to tell them. So number one, you all read? Now, I got, I got lots of scripture here, too, so I won't read everything, but I do have a lot of scripture. Get your eyes off yourself. I like that one. It's not about you. See, one thing that it says that's going to happen in the end times is people are going to become lovers of their self. Amen. No one matters but me, 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 me. Amen. So our first step is to get our minds off of self. We need to think of others first. Okay. Um, let's turn to, we'll go ahead and go there. Philippians 2.4. I'm going to use your Bible. Is that all right? May I? Okay, thank you. Yes. Uh, he's looking at me to make sure I'm not mistreating his Bible. Y'all see this? Let each of you look out not only for his own interest, but also for the interests of others. Amen. Don't think yourself so highly that, you know what? God doesn't care about that other person that you didn't help when they needed help. That's good. Number two, evaluate the spiritual environment around you. Now, does everyone understand to evaluate the spiritual environment? If you're in an environment and they're, they're not speaking the truth of God's words, get out of it. Don't, don't put yourself in that environment. You need to get back to where you need to be. And this is Matthew 10 and 16. I have to be careful over here. He's going to smack me around. <laughs> Behold, I send you out as sheep in the midst of wolves. Mm. Therefore, be wise as serpents and harmless as doves. Wise as a serpent. How wise is a serpent? You know, we think, why is he talking about serpents? Serpents is what got Adam and Eve messed up, isn't it? But because a snake, he, he's got these three things that we need to have, okay? Simple. He doesn't make anything hard. He's a snake, even a rattlesnake. They'll even rattle and tell you they're there, don't they? Keep it simple. Be discerning. 
We have to walk in the discerning of the spirits. God says, put them to the test. Test the spirits. And we need to be prudent. 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 Oh, he's writing me notes now. Okay. Number three, get rid of judgmental attitude towards people. Free your heart. Don't be judgmental toward people. They don't look like you. They don't act like you. They don't talk like you. But guess what? God made us all different. Embrace the difference. Embrace the difference. It's a good thing. Okay. Um, that's John 8, 3 through 11. I'm not going to make y'all turn there. That's a lot. But that will get you getting rid of the judgment attitude towards other people. Number four, assume everyone needs encouragement. You know, everyone. Even pastors need encouragement. I know. Imagine that. Everybody needs encouragement. We ha- Where? It's Romans 13, 19. Okay, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> he's going to put me to the test, isn't he? No, you're fine. You're fine. I got it wrote down. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not worried about it. I got it wrote down. <laughs> 13, 19. Y'all want to turn there? Absolutely. I know pastors over here saying, will you just get it done? What things to say over here. I can't even get the page turned, James. There we go. 13, 19. Nope. Well, I wrote that one down wrong. Let's go to Romans 14, 19, if there's that one. Yeah, there is. Okay. Whew. Bailed myself out of that, didn't I? Yeah. For he who serves Christ in these things is acceptable to God and approved by man or men. Okay, so it is, make it clear, it is Romans 14, 19. I'm not sure how I wrote that one, but I did. Number five is to surrender to the spirit of the, the gifts, I'm sorry, of the Holy Spirit that is inside you. Does anybody walk in any of the gifts of the Spirit? You know, we come to church and we don't, we don't, this is supposed to be a a Holy Ghost, Bible speaking, on fire church. But how often do you hear anybody speaking in tongue with an interpretation? That's a gift. Both of those are gifts that come from the Holy Spirit. And I know they operate in the church. People don't want to speak out. Well, let me just tell you this, people. God says, if you're embarrassed of him, he'll be embarrassed of you. Now, that's short. That's not what it said in the exact words, but that's what it says. That's what it's referring to. Get up here and you speak boldly, or you sit at your seat and you speak boldly the words of God. They are nothing to be ashamed of. Be bold in the things and the gifts that God gave you. That's what we have to do. Is bold. If you'd say, well, I don't have boldness, pray. Pray. You I will did. receive boldness. Amen. I and I give you the spirit of fear, but sound mind and boldness. I know that because I used to be shy, and I know y'all don't believe that, but it's a fact. And like I said, we had one guy come to church who knew me back in the day, and he was like, Man, give that girl a stick and she'll talk. Because <laughs> he, he rarely heard my voice. And it was kind of funny. Anyway, number five. Surrender to the gifts. Oh, I already said that one, didn't I? I'm sorry. Did I give you a scripture, Dave? Did not. Okay. Scripture. 1 Peter 4.10. Okay, and then we're going to move on to six. Don't let fear stop you. Don't let timidity rule you. Let's see what 2 Timothy 1.7 says. 
You want to find this for me so I don't mess up your Bible? Just do it, huh? <laughs> You're making me nervous standing over me. Second Timothy. Second Timothy. Huh? Uh, uh, Second Timothy. First Timothy. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, y'all. Let me get to where I need to be, and you know what? I know what I'm doing. Anyway, God did not give us the spirit of fear, did he? What did he give us? Sound mind. Amen, amen. Two and, what did I say, seven? Let me Consider what I say, and may the Lord give you understanding. That's not it either. Huh? Hey, I'm in two seven. Okay, never mind. My bad again. I can't even read up here, y'all. I'm sorry. I apologize. I know I can't do this without my Bible, I'm telling you. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. Without love, you're not going to reach anyone out there. If you don't love people, you can't touch people. And people don't want to hear what you have to say. Because we, all, we were always taught, they don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. If I don't care about y'all, y'all don't care what I know, do you? Y'all, would y'all come here if men pastor didn't care? Would this be your church? I mean, seriously, no, listen, speak on out there. You know, you have to care about people. You have to have a love in your heart for people. And if you're having trouble with that, ask God to show you what he sees. Loan me your eyes, God, so that I can see what you see in that person. I've had to do that. And I'm going to tell you what, it works. It works. I had a woman that did not like me, and she was mean to me every Monday night, coming to our class. Mean to me. Well, one night I got mean too. Now, two wrongs didn't make that right, did it? Every night on Monday night, man, every Monday night, I go home after church. I'm on my knees at my bed, and I'm praying, Lord, I cannot love this woman. You have to help me to love her. Let me see her through your eyes. This went on for quite a while. One day she came in. She really did. She was very ugly to me. She got on to me pretty hard, so I snapped back. So when I go home and I'm on my knees again, well, guess what? God is saying, apologize what what did I do she was the one mean I just defended myself as I said two wrongs didn't make it right did it and then he said when I finally agreed to apologize and uh, publicly you rebuked her so publicly you will apologize to her ouch had to go to class the next Monday and apologize to that woman for her being ugly to me. No, <laughs> for me being ugly to her. So instead of having to go back and say, I'm sorry, just ask God to show them to you through his eyes. Then you don't have to apologize. Because let me tell you, that's hard. We're in a class full. We had big 12-step programs back then. We're in a class full of people. And I had to make an announcement. And you, you know, here's, here was the reply I got. I accept your apology. Good. And I went, hmm. <laughs> thank you. Anyway, uh, number six. I already did that one. Okay, seven. Am I there? No. Okay, number seven. I gotta mark these so I know where I'm at. Oh, this is my last one, y'all. Remember, you are always on assignment. What does that mean to you? Always be ready, right? The Bible says be ready in season and out. In season and out. If somebody asks you a question, you need to have an answer. And I'm gonna tell you the only way to have an answer for their question is 
have, be filled with the Spirit and let the Spirit tell you what that answer may be. But I want to tell you this. If you're not reading this, you don't know nothing. You have to read your Bible. You have to spend time with God. These seven steps are important. Keep your eyes off yourself. Evaluate the spiritual environment around you. Get rid of your judgmental attitude. I like that one. Assume everyone needs encouragement. Surrender to the gifts of the Holy Spirit that is inside you. Don't let fear stop you. Remember, you are always on assignment. We're always on it. You know, you punch a time clock, you're on assignment, right? You have a job to do that you've been assigned. You got to go do that job. You punch the time clock, now you're no longer on assignment. Well, guess what? We don't have a time clock. God does not give us a time clock. We are always on assignment 24 hours, seven days a week. You want to work and operate like God wants you to. you got to get serious with God. And I'm going to tell you, this is the days you want to be serious. It, Jesus could come anytime. I'm ready. I mean, I'm not necessarily ready to go, but I'm ready. I know where I'm going. And I like to think that everybody in this church building knows where they're going without a doubt in their mind. Amen. 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 I don't need that. Okay, he don't, oh yeah, he don't need this. Um, James had read something I have wrote down also. It, who needs your voice? Or why would they even need your voice? I guess it should be. For encouraging words, right? Why would they need your hands? For healing. And why would they need your feet? Going to find the ones that need help. See, God needs you. He needs your mouth to speak, your hands to work. He needs your feet to move. But the people around us out there need the same thing. We have to go find them, hunt them down. <laughs> Ask everyone if they're saved. You know, do you believe in Jesus? And don't accept, yeah, I know who he is. But is he your Lord? Everybody knows him. Satan knows him. But is he the Lord of your life? That's the question to ask. Amen? Okay, James. I'm sorry. Amen. Oh, turn it off. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Very good words, isn't it? You know, there's always scriptures. And that's why it's so important that you open your Bible up and study it. There's going to be a come a time. There's going to come a time. There already come times have already been happening that they're going to take our Bibles from us one day. That's what they talk about toward the end times that they're going to take our Bibles from us. Is there enough in you? Is there enough scripture in you that you can still do what God's calling you to do? Huh? Do you know enough of the word that if they took your Bible from you and said you can't have the Bible no more? Is there enough in you that you can still do what God wants us to do while we're here? Huh? Something for you to think about. Because we're looking at those days that are more likely going to happen one day in the future in our, within our lifetime. Amen there. You know, so we need to be equipped. You need to equip yourself. Like I said many times from up here. I can teach you some nuggets of the word. It's up to you to study the word so that you can apply it to your life. You know what? I have a relationship with God. My wife has a relationship with God. Each and every one of you, he says, my sheep hear my voice and they obey me. If you're not hearing his voice, are you his child? See, it's something for you to think about. He says, my children. My sheep, my children hear my voice and they obey me. Are you listening to God's voice? Well, how do you hear God? How does he talk to you? There's several different ways he talks to you. He can talk to you through your neighbor. 
He can talk to you through the Word of God, through the Bible. He can talk to you, huh? He can talk to you through a billboard. Yeah, through a billboard. He can talk to you through a child. I know I've heard little babies, children, say something that was so impressive to me that I said, man, you know what? That had to come from God telling me, giving me something, giving me something I need to apply to my life. Isn't that amazing? Because, see, if you're a child of God, you should be communicating with God. You should have a relationship with him. You should be hearing from him. Amen? Amen. And you know what? If you're a child of God, God's not going to encourage you to be a thief. God's not going to encourage you to go around cussing and, 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 and doing things like the world. God is always going to encourage you to clean up and get away from some of your baggage that you have. Amen? I used to cuss a lot. I used to drink and do drugs a lot. I used to be, do violent, stupid things in my life. But as I study, as I continue in the Word, and as I continue hearing God's voice, I began to get rid of the filth that I once wallowed in. Today, those things are gone from my life. You know, I try, me and my wife, we try and live and do and encourage people to step into the glory of God through His Word. Amen? That's amazing. You know, we have gone down several, several different paths. Some people have been with us since the very beginning. You know, they've been down paths with us, and we've had some rocky roads. We've had some bumps in the road. But you know what? You know why I say God's within us? God is in us? Because God cannot fail. And if he's in me, then we cannot fail. It's only when I step out of his grace and things and get into the flesh, then God separates himself from me. It's all about me then instead of him. But as long as I stay in fellowship with him, loving him, listening to him, God will always encourage me to do what I need to be doing for him. It's about him. It's always about him. It's not about me. God says, I love you. I sent my son and he died for you. I have accomplished everything you're ever going to need. I have accomplished this for you. Amen. All you have to do is learn what it is and walk in that goodness that he promises us. You know, he supplied all of our needs according to his riches and glory. Not ours, his. Amen. So we have to understand, we have to learn what the scripture is saying so that we can apply these principles to our lives and we always have victory. You know, I have prayed, you know, I, I don't think I've ever read it in the Bible saying that I got car problems and uh, I need to pray over my car. I never heard it say exactly that in there. I did hear him say that I can pray for anything because he blesses his children. So if he blesses his children, that must mean that I can pray over my car. I can pray over anything and everything I need in my life. And he is faithful and just to give us, to provide for us. So we do. I pray over my car. I got an issue with a car. I'll pray over that car. I'll lay my hands on that car. And guess what happens? It straightens up and does fine. I can pray over people that's in the hospital and they recover. I can, I can speak to people in restaurants and pray for people in restaurants. They receive the blessings of the redemptive power of God going into them because they say, I receive. I receive. And I know my father. He listens to me because I am his child. And he says, if you want it done, then I will do it for you. They get to receive the blessings of my father, which in return... I get to see, well, sometimes, not always, but I, I know that they're going to receive something. I know that they're going to call on Jesus. You know, I believe in my heart. If I am going to speak the Bible, if I'm going to speak the Word of God to somebody, then there is such an anointing that follows the Word of God that they will receive what they need in their lives because God knows more than I know and uh, I can, all I got to do is be faithful. And then God says, 
scoot over a little bit. Let me take over. <laughs> Moves me out of the way. And this is what we do. We fight him. <laughs> <laughs> and we move out of the way a little bit, and God's, uh, God's anointing manifests in people's lives. You know, people been on their deathbed. On their deathbed and pray over them, lay hands on them. They get up completely healed. They go to the doctor and say, hey, uh, uh, they have cancer all through their body. No, I don't. No, don't. Why do you say that for? Because God healed me. When they come and prayed and they laid their hands on me, I felt the cancer leave my body. So I do not have no cancer no more. Well, can I run tests? And they run tests and they cannot find cancer in their body nowhere. That's the power of our living God that we are able to tap into to help others. We are his feet. We are his voice. We are his ears. And we are his eyes. As long as we're living on this earth, God says, I need people that I can use to manifest my presence Amen. to the lost and dying world. Amen. That's what it's about. That's what we need to understand. Hey, God's tickled, man. He celebrates all of heaven, celebrates every time. He, they've been celebrating because of our, our, new, our birth in his redemptive power a long time ago. However long it's been, you got born again. They've been celebrating that ever since. But you know what? All of heaven rejoices when we bring a new person into his kingdom. He says, I'll leave this to go after the one. Okay? Then leave yours to go after that one. Amen? Go get that one. Go get that one. And we'll see a handful of people. We'll see the multitudes of people being born again. Amen. The Bible never tells us to be selfish, greedy. Don't go and tell. He never told us. He says, go and tell. If you're not going and telling, then you're being in disobedience to the Father. I'm sorry. Okay? We need to be his voice. We need to be his feet. Go and tell. Wherever you go in your life, whatever road you take, down that highway or wherever you're going, it is important that you spread the joy of the Lord wherever you go. Wherever you go, it's important. Because somebody, they might not react to it at first, but if you plant some seeds, what does the scripture says? Somebody else will come and water it. You plant the seeds, Somebody else will water it, okay? Amen. You might not ever get to see the people that you have touched. And that's what God showed me a, a, a quite a while back. You might not get, ever get to see all of them. But the thing about it is, if you're not going and doing and telling, then, you know what I'm saying? You're missing the mark. Amen? Amen? Be a doer of the word and not a hearer only. Okay? Let's be a doer of the word and not a hearer only. Amen. Father God, we thank you for the time that you have given to us here today. We thank you for your Holy Spirit to be in here with us, to ministering to each and every one of us. We thank you for your loving power. In Jesus' name, we give you the glory for it. And we we'll always praise your, praise your name wherever we may go. Send us out that we may touch the world. As your great commission says that we need to be doing. Send us out so that we can touch the world. Direct our feet so that we know what path to go. You say you light the path. Then light our paths that we may see the light and follow after. And Father, we praise you for this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, guys. It's so awesome seeing you guys come here.